And good evening. Uh, thank you for your interest in the 2021 through 2025 Delaware Strategic Highway Safety Plan, or SHSP. My name is Adam Weiser, and I'm an associate with Whitman Recquart and Associates. And we have worked with the SHSP core committee to develop the uh, 2021 through 2025 Delaware Strategic Highway Safety Plan. The SHSP core committee agencies comprise of the Delaware Department of Transportation, the Delaware Office of Highway Safety, and the Delaware State Police have recently completed a year-long effort to update Delaware's SHSP. The purpose of this informational meeting is to present the completed plan, inform the public of the plan's goal, objective, and emphasis areas, and prevent our strategies for improving safety on Delaware's roadways. Just a few Zoom meeting housekeeping items before we get started. All attendees will be placed on mute and video will be disabled. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A feature of Zoom by clicking on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. You may type your question into the window that opens and questions will be answered at the end of the presentation in the order in which they are received. If you're joining by phone only, uh, please email your questions to dotpublic at delaware.gov. That's dotpublic at delaware.gov and someone will provide a response after the meeting. Please note that the chat feature is disabled. If you need closed captioning, please click on the live transcript button at the bottom of the screen. If the menu at the bottom of the screen disappears, simply move your mouse to the bottom and that menu should reappear. Before we get started with the presentation, I would like to welcome Secretary Nicole Majeski of the Department of Transportation Deputy Secretary Kimberly Chandler of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, and Colonel Melissa Zebley of the Delaware State Police. The, their three agencies make up the core committee of the Strategic Highway Safety Plan, which oversees the plan development and implementation. I'd like to turn it over to Secretary Majeski for some remarks. Thank you, Adam. And thank you all for joining us here tonight. We are super excited uh, to be able to come to you tonight with the update of our 2021 to 2025 Strategic Highway Safety Plan. Uh, every five years, we're required to update our Strategic Highway Safety Plan. And as Adam mentioned, over this last year, DelDOT, the Office of Highway Safety, Delaware State Police, and our Department of Safety and Homeland Security met with our stakeholders across the state to get input on how to update this latest version of our plan and to identify our core focus areas, which our team is going to review with you tonight. You know, we can't, you know, we say it a lot here at the Department of Transportation, but we can't say it enough that safety is our number one priority. And not just uh, for the safety of those that are traveling in vehicles, but really the safety of all of our users on our Delaware roadways and every mode of traffic. So what you're gonna see tonight is a, a, a review of these core emphasis areas that we are gonna focus on over the next five years to make the transportation network safer for all of our users, regardless of the mode of, traffic, uh, uh, mode of travel that, you are, that you're using. Um, so I do, uh, I do have an ask for those that are attending tonight, that once you see the presentation, you get a chance to look through the plan, that you really share that information with the networks that you have to help us uh, to get the word out and so that everybody can do their part in making our Delaware roadways safer. I do wanna take a, 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 a moment here to give a special thank you to the entire DelDOT team that's worked very hard to uh, put this plan together, especially Mark Lutz, Peter Haig, and Scott Neidert, who've been working uh, countless hours and attending countless meetings to pull all this information together for, uh, for us in developing this plan and, and um, helping us uh, do this implementation going forward. So thank you all for joining us uh, here tonight. And it is uh, my pleasure to turn it over to the Deputy Secretary of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security, Kimberly Chandler. Deputy Secretary, De Deputy Secretary Chandler, it's uh, uh, to you now. I believe you're on mute. Sorry. 
Deputy Chandler is having some issues um, ah. getting her unmuted. Could we move on to our Colonel yes. Deputy, please? So uh, while we're uh, uh, waiting for Deputy Secretary Chandler, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Colonel Melissa Zebley of the Delaware State Police for her remarks. Colonel Zebley. Yes, sir, thank you very much. Uh, certainly good evening to everyone. Um, I'm Melissa Zebley, Colonel of the Delaware State Police. Uh, thank you for your participation this evening and for allowing me the opportunity to address you. It is my pleasure to represent the women and men of the DSP and illustrate our commitment to the very important work of highway safety, which is a critical component of our agency's mission. We extend our gratitude to our partners at DelDOT, the Office of Highway Safety, and the members of the stakeholder committee for their efforts in the construction of the 2021 to 2025 Delaware Highway Safety Plan. In a moment, as the core committee shares the intricate details of the strategic highway safety plan, you will quickly realize how important highway safety is to each of the involved core committee agencies, how knowledgeable, motivated, and passionate each agency's core committee members are, and how well Delaware's key traffic safety partners work together for the safety of the Delaware motoring and pedestrian public. As you will see, the core committee has not only used data from previous years, but has also considered future enhancements in order to develop the best, most comprehensive plan. Within the Delaware State Police, we are also committed to proactive data-driven models in each of our eight patrol troops located throughout the state. We realize that at times, a uniform trooper may represent the most visible component of the highway safety plan as it pertains to enforcement or investigative measures on our state roadways. But be assured that our agency works collaboratively with all of our partners, analyzes data related to all dimensions of highway safety discussed in this framework, engages our community members, and then further customizes our patrol traffic strategies for that geographic troop area. From the rural roadways of Sussex County through our beach communities, along the Route 1 corridor in Kent County and up through our interstate systems in Newcastle County, we tailor our patrol responses to that geographical area with the integration of this strategic highway safety plan priorities of reducing fatal and serious injury related crashes, impacting both motorists and pedestrians. Your safety remains our highest priority in our collaborative approach. Thank you for your interest and investment of time to learn about Delaware's 2021 to 2025 strategic highway safety plan. Thank you to all of our partners for lending your expertise to this plan. Please stay safe and be well. And with that, I believe I see her prepared. I will turn it over to Deputy Secretary Chan, I, maybe I'm not. I will turn it over to Mr. Adam Weiser. Okay. Uh, so Deputy Secretary Chandler, are you ready for your remarks at this time or should we move on? We no, no, we cannot. I'm sorry. Okay, we we can move on, and if we if we if we have time at the end, we can we can come back to you. Is that okay? Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to our presentation now. So tonight's presentation will provide an introduction into the uh, the plan, uh, our committee structure, and the update process that we worked through over the last year. Uh, we'll then describe the plan's goal and objective, uh, describe our selected emphasis areas for the plan, and, and what strategies we included for each emphasis area. But finally, at the end, we'll briefly discuss our plans for evaluation and imp implementation of the plan over the next five years. And at the end of our presentation, we will hold a question and answer session with the attendees. So again, if you have a question, please type it into the uh, chat pod or the question and answer pod, and uh, we will answer that at the end of the presentation. Uh, so to start out, uh, we want to introduce what a strategic highway safety plan is. And basically, it's a comprehensive data-driven transportation safety plan that's mandated by the Federal Highway Administration with the goal to reduce highway fatalities and serious injuries on all public roads. Federally funded safety projects must be consistent with a state's SHSP. And the main purpose of the SHSP is to establish consistent statewide goals and objectives have data-driven emphasis areas, and coordinate with safety stakeholders and other transportation plans like the Capital Transportation Program, the Long Range Transportation Plan, uh, the Highway Safety Plan, uh, and other plans uh, that other that state agencies and other safety stakeholders put together. Priorities are set based on crash and other available traffic and safety data, 
and SHSP is designed to address engineering, education, enforcement, and emergency medical services strategies to improve highway safety, generally referred to as the four E's of highway safety. Uh, the Federal Highway Administration requires that the state's SHSP be updated at least every five years. The committee structure of the Delaware SHSP is comprised of a core committee, which includes, as we talked about before, the Delaware Department of Transportation, DELDOT, Office of Highway Safety, or OHS, and the Delaware State Police, DSP, and a stakeholder committee comprised of other state and federal transportation safety partners as required by federal transportation legislation. Additionally, the core committee reached out to other safety stakeholder groups, advocacy groups, and the public throughout the state were consulted during the development of the, of the 2021 through 2025 SHSP. The update to the SHSP was an approximately year long process. The team utilized 2015 through 2019 fatality and serious injury crash data to determine the plan's goal and objective and select emphasis areas. We held a virtual public workshop where we saw uh, a look, look for a public input on the goal uh, objective and emphasis areas. That, that virtual workshop was held in June of 2020. In August, uh, we held virtual emphasis area team meetings for each emphasis area. And these meetings included members of the stakeholder committee, advocacy groups, safety professionals, and interested members of the public to brainstorm potential strategies and actions that would be incorporated into the plan. The plan document was then written throughout the fall of 2020, and the plan was adopted in December. With the plan development completed, we are now moving into the implementation stage. Strategies and actions from the plan will be implemented over the next five years. Some are relatively easy to implement, while others require more time to fully implement. The core committee agencies and its stakeholder partners will be using many avenues to implement this plan. As mentioned previously, a virtual public workshop was held in June 2020. During the 30-day comment period, 66 comments were submitted. The majority of the respondents supported the proposed goal, objective, and emphasis areas. Suggested strategies were reviewed with the emphasis area teams and incorporated into the final plan document as appropriate. The previous plan, the 2015 SHSP, included a goal or mission, as it was termed at the time, to eliminate fatalities and serious injuries on Delaware's roadways through a multi-agency approach that utilizes education and for enforcement, engineering, and emergency medical services strategies. The goal of eliminating fatalities and serious injuries remains a primary focus of the Strategic Highway Safety Plan and the Corps Committee. Therefore, the Corps Committee decided, decided to retain this mission for the 21, 2021 through 2025 SHSP. When we met to discuss setting the objective for the, uh, the current plan, Various trend lines were evaluated to determine an appropriate objective, again, looking at that fatality and serious injury crash data. The core committee agreed on a measurable objective to reduce fatalities and serious injuries by 15% over the next five years, which is gonna be measured from the average number of fatalities and serious injuries during the previous five-year period, 2015 through 2019. This chart illustrates the annual objective for fatalities and serious injuries combined based on a 15% reduction over the next five years. The objective is measured from a baseline of 606 combined fatalities and serious injuries, which is calculated from the average of 2015 through 2019 crash data. The objective to be reached at the end of the five-year plan period is no more than 515 combined fatalities and serious injuries. Additional information is, avail is available within the plan document, which is located on DELDOT's webpage, and we'll give you the web address for that at the end of the presentation. <clears throat> Emphasis areas establish the priorities for safety improvements and programs on Delaware's roadways. An emphasis area can focus on a specific crash type, such as intersection crashes or roadway departure crashes, different populations of road users, such as pedestrians, younger drivers, or older drivers, or driver behaviors such as impaired driving, unrestrained motorists, or speeding. Fatality and serious injury crash data was reviewed between 2015 through 2019 for each potential emphasis area and ranked by percentages of the total fatalities and serious injuries. Those emphasis areas with the highest percentage of combined fatalities and serious injuries were considered for inclusion in the 2021 through 2025 SHSP. 
The selected emphasis areas are intersections, distracted driving, impaired driving, roadway departure, pedestrians, motorcycles, unrestrained motorists, and speed, speeding and traffic records. Except for the addition of distracted driving, the proposed emphasis areas match those from the 2015 plan. Speeding as a contributing factor is un, underrepresented in the crash data, and the core committee recognizes that higher speeds increase crash severity. For this reason, speeding remains as an emphasis area. One non-data-driven emphasis area related to traffic records was also retained from the 2015 plan. This emphasis area has been included in Delaware's SHSP since its inception, identifying the need to continue to focus on safety data quality and accuracy. Strategies which are general in nature, focusing on engineering, education, enforcement, emergency services, data improvements and policy improvements were developed for each of the emphasis areas, as well as some overall program related strategies. Each strategy contains several actions that are intended to provide crash reduction benefits, programmatic and policy changes, improved data collection and usage and similar benefits. Strategies and actions were developed from best practices used by other states, our federal safety partners and other similar organizations. Proven safety countermeasures such as rumble strips and high friction surface treatment that are already being used in Delaware will continue to be used. Recommendations from the previous virtual public workshop and core committee agency initiatives were also considered in the development of the actions contained in the plan. Peter Haig, Chief of Traffic Engineering for DelDOT, will now discuss the strategies for each emphasis area. Peter? Thank you, Adam. Overall statewide strategies are included in the 2021-2025 SHSP. The strategies include implementing statewide programs and policies that are aimed at improving funding, safety culture, and agency practices. With the arrival of connected and autonomous vehicles, the plan includes a strategy to implement statewide programs and policies that, are, that provide for the, the development of infrastructure that supports CAV technology. Finally, this plan will focus on improving linkages between land use and transportation to improve safety of all road users. Sorry about that. Each emphasis area has a specific emphasis area objective for the reduction of fatalities and serious injuries. Emphasis area objectives are consistent with the plan's overall objective to reduce fatalities and serious injuries by 15% over the next five years. The strategies that will be implemented to achieve this objective include operational, geometric, and traffic control device improvements at intersections using innovative technology and automated enforcement practices, educating the public on traffic laws, new traffic control devices, and general intersection safety, and implementing policies targeted at improving intersection safety. Intersection improvements will focus on effective countermeasures, such as reducing conflict points at intersections along divided highways, expanding the electronic red light safety program, implementing technology to ready the road safe system for connected and autonomous vehicles, and evaluating new technology to reduce red light running at signalized intersections to reduce the occurrence of red light running. Distracted driving includes talking or texting on a cell phone while driving, as well as other activities that take the driver's attention away from the primary focus of operating a motor vehicle. Strategies for reducing distracted driving related crashes include educating the public about the laws and dangers of distracted driving, 
increasing distracted driving enforcement programs and supporting legislation to strengthen distracted driving efforts. Roadway infrastructure improvements such as high friction surface treatment, rumble strips, lighting, and improvements to signing can also be implemented to minimize the consequences of distracted driving. Lastly, improving data collection related to distracted driving to better understand the problem and target resources appropriately is included in this plan. Impaired driving includes operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. Strategies to reduce impaired driving include, include education campaigns about the dangers of impaired driving and the laws related to impaired driving. Campaign topics include encouraging the use of ride sharing services prior to consumption to minimize the temptation to utilize a vehicle once impaired. A second strategy is strengthening enforcement programs by continuing DUI checkpoints, expanding the drug, the drug rec recognition expert program, and conducting training to educate owners and servers of alcohol establishments regarding the dangers of over-serving and identification of impairment. Finally, strategies to install engineering treatments to reduce the consequences of impaired driving and improving data collection and monitoring of impaired driving trends will be implemented. A road departure crash occurs when a vehicle leaves the travel lane and strikes another vehicle, a roadside object or overturns. Roadway departure related fatalities and serious injuries have decreased in recent years, which may be attributed to the data driven implementation of systemic improvements such as rumble strips and high friction surface treatments. Strategies to further reduce road departure include those that reduce the likelihood of a vehicle leaving a travel lane, minimizing the consequences of leaving the roadway by improving the roadside environment public education on safe driving practices, improved policies and guidelines, and enhancing the identification of high-risk corridors and high-risk driving behaviors. Pedestrians accounted for 25% of all fatalities and 9% of all serious injuries from 2015 through 2019. Many pedestrian related crashes occur on higher speed divided highways at locations that are not marked for pedestrian crossings. Strategies to reduce pedestrian fatalities and serious injuries focus on engineering, education and enforcement, as well as improving data collection and developing policies and guidance to support pedestrian safety measures. Educational training includes incorporation of pedestrian laws and rules of the road into driver's education and defensive driving curricula. And outreach programs for children, school children targeting pedestrian safety issues. Engineering countermeasures include continuation of pedestrian safety audits at high crash locations, implementing additional crosswalks and pedestrian signals continuing effective use of new technologies such as rectangular rapid flashing beacons and evaluating new pedestrian detection technologies at intersections. Additionally, this plan includes strategies to improve emergency services and incident management to address pedestrian safety. In 2019, the death rate for motorcyclists was 9.1 per 10,000 registrations, whereas the death rate for all registered vehicles was 1.4 per, per 10,000 registrations. Compared to passenger vehicles, motorcycles are less visible to other motorists on the roadway, provide virtually no protection to their riders, and can travel at high speeds. The strategies that focus on these concerns include educational campaigns aimed at both motorcyclists and other vehicle operators, strengthening enforcement programs, 
supporting legislation that will strengthen motorcycle safety and implement improving infrastructure and considering motorcycles when installing improvements. Even with constant focus on seatbelt usage over the years, there are still some vehicle occupants that are not wearing seatbelts. This emphasis area includes a focus on the proper use of child restraint systems. Strategies are primarily focused on enforcement of seatbelt and child restraint usage, as well as educating the public on the safety benefits on proper restraints in vehicles. Strategies and actions from other emphasis areas may also have a secondary benefit on this emphasis area, especially those that are focused on reducing the consequences and severity of a crash when it occurs. Speeding has become a socially accepted behavior, and in some cases, it can be encouraged by one's peers. Speeding commonly overlaps with other adverse behaviors such as impaired driving, distracted driving, or not using a seatbelt, and as a result, is unreported. Strategies have been developed for this plan, taking those factors into account. Strategies focus on educating the public about the dangers of speeding, enhanced enforcement practices, including implementation of innovative enforcement measures, improving policies and guidelines, appropriate engineering countermeasures, and improved data collection. Educate, education campaigns will focus on the perception that speeding is acceptable and improve the driver's understanding of the consequences of speeding. Engineering countermeasures include reviews of existing speed limits to determine their appropriateness, use of variable speed limit technology, evaluating innovative technology and automated enforcement practices, and implementing countermeasures that, are, that have a combined crash reduction in speed speeding related crashes and pedestrian related crashes. The final emphasis area is traffic records. Robust traffic records are vital to the development of the SHSP and monitoring and improving trends associated with roadway safety. The strategy of traffic records focuses on improving data collection abilities, ensuring data accuracy, linking data systems together for improved data evaluation efficiencies and making data more accessible so that end users can identify priorities for transportation and traffic safety programs. Adam Weiser will now wrap up the presentation. Great, thank you, Peter. Uh, the core committee agencies are now working to implement the SHSP. We will be working with the previously established emphasis area teams our stakeholder groups, existing councils and committees to implement the actions identified in this plan. Those actions with high crash reduction value will be implemented first using available resources and other actions may take some more time to implement. Progress towards achieving the objective of the 2021 through 2025 SHSP will be measured annually. Each core team agency will report progress within their respective annual safety performance publications. These publications are available for the public to review on, the web, on, on various websites. Additionally, progress towards achieving the objective of this plan and implementation status updates will be presented periodically to safety stakeholders. The presentation portion of the workshop has ended. Um, before I end, uh, though, I do want to turn it back over to Deputy Secretary Chandler for the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. Deputy Secretary Chandler, you're on. All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can, thank you. Yay, technology, you gotta love it. I said you gotta <laughs> laugh to keep from crying. You never know when it's going to work. My apologies, um, but I was able to get logged on to another laptop. Um, I just have a few comments. I don't wanna keep us uh, any longer than we have to be online, but I did have a few remarks that I prepared. I've kind of tweaked them somewhat. Um, ensuring the safety of all who utilize our transportation system is a top priority 
for our agencies and critical to improving the quality of life for not only Delaware residents, but also for our many visitors. On behalf of the Department of Safety and Homeland Security and our cabinet secretary, Nathaniel McQueen Jr., we extend our thanks to DelDOT, our Office of Highway Safety, the Delaware State Police, and the Stakeholder Committee for working together to bring this project to the forefront. The development of this plan is a testament to the partnerships between multiple state and local agencies. With safety as our top priority, this new plan will serve as a launching pad for us and our partners to re-emphasize our efforts. This framework will help us reach our goals of reducing fatalities and serious injuries by 15% over the next five years to reach that goal of zero fatalities and serious injuries. In addition, it builds on the framework of prior plans and provides a benchmark for which roadway safety projects can be evaluated and selected. We must continue to meet the current challenges and mitigate new ones to achieve the long-term vision. It is important that we remain committed to addressing these challenges. Again, thank you for your partnership and commitment to ensuring the safety of those who travel our roadways. And thank you for, for inviting me to join you this evening we are proud of our contribution and look forward to even more progress. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Secretary Chandler. On behalf of the core committee agencies, I would like to thank those in attendance for their time and attention this evening. The full plan can be reviewed by going to www.safety.deldot.gov or through the web address shown on the screen. For more information, please contact DelDOT's community relations staff using the contact information shown on the screen. If you have a specific roadway safety issue or concern, please use DelDOT's report a road condition feature to report that concern and it will be investigated by the appropriate DelDOT division. We will now respond to questions that have been received through the Q&A feature of Zoom. If you have a question, please type it into the Q&A box. As a reminder, we will not be taking questions over the phone. Those listening by phone may email their questions to dotpublic at delaware.gov and someone will respond to your question after this meeting. Uh, so now I'd like to ask all the panelists to uh, click on your videos and uh, we'll go ahead and start um, answering questions that we've received. All right, thanks, Adam. So uh, currently we have six questions that are open um, right now and um, what I'd like to do is read the questions and uh, we'll, we'll let our um, experts answer those questions. So, um, Peter, the first uh, two questions are, are going to be coming towards, towards you. Um, the first is, uh, where is the Pet Advisory Committee in Delaware? Um, and then the second is related to uh, Hawk signals and, and their use in Delaware. So if you could maybe speak a little bit to, to both of those things. Sure, Greg. So in regards to the pedestrian advisory committees, there, there is a strategy within the strategic plan um, in the pedestrian emphasis area that talks about initiating a pedestrian safety stakeholder group with membership from appropriate state agencies, advocacy groups, and the public to identify pedestrian safety and connectivity improvements, policy updates, and improve collaboration between the state and local agencies consistent with the objectives in this plan. Um, in regards to hawk analysis or the, the usage of the hawk, um, it is currently, it is a tool in our toolbox um, with regards to evaluations. Um, we actually have a, we did a report um, as of last May 2020 about the effective use of the hawk um, and what kind of information um, transpired based on existing locations. Um, so we're constantly looking at evaluating uh, devices, Hawks being one of them, rapid flash beacons being another one, um, just to give two examples. Thanks, Peter. All right, our uh, next question, and I'm just gonna continue to go in order here, um, is related to the use of tele telecommunications along our highways and um, whether there's opportunities for, um, I'll say increasing um, internet access in rural areas with um, highway projects and the like. So, um, Mark, I think I'm going to kick this one over to you. Great. Thanks, Greg. Um, uh, my name is Mark Lutz. I'm a deputy uh, director here at DelDOT. 
And uh, thanks for everybody um, for, uh, for listening in tonight. I appreciate it. Um, there's really two parts of this question, I think. So the, the part about telecommunications, private telecommunications being in the state right away really doesn't have anything to do with the strategic highway safety plan. That's more of a, um, it's, a it's a good topic, but not really for this uh, presentation or this forum. Um, it is complicated. There's FCC rules. There's possible new rulemaking coming, but that's really more about getting um, internet to, uh, to more rural areas. Um, really related to uh, a, a traffic safety issue, uh, one real-time surveillance uh, system that we are using right now is our automated uh, electronic red light running system, uh, which is an excellent example of, um, of, of the use of real-time surveillance and, uh, and in, as part of this plan. And I, I believe we mentioned earlier that uh, one of our strategies is to increase the number of, uh, of automated uh, red light camera systems that we have. Um, that's been a very successful program. And uh, again, we intend to, uh, to increase that usage throughout the state. So, uh, so I don't know if anybody from um, Delaware State Police would wanna chime in on more on the possible need of real-time surveillance. I know we do work with uh, a couple of the local police agencies with um, where we've worked with them, where they have the uh, um, video, uh, video surveillance that is uh, on the highways. But uh, for the most part, that issue is really a, a non-safety related issue. Thanks, Mark. All right, our, our next question here, um, it, the question is, with intersections being um, the biggest emphasis area, why does DelDOT consistently make no objection to developments where they are failing level of service in close proximity? So um, I don't know who from uh, DelDOT would like to answer that, but I'll, I'll kick that over to um, anybody who would like to take that one. So we mentioned at the beginning of the presentation with regard to intersections that the linkage between land use and the transportation is a strategy. Um, so this topic kind of falls under that umbrella of that linkage and improvement in the, in the process, as well as what policies and guidelines that need to be reviewed um, and considered for, for updating. Um, so I think that's a very specific question, but it's, brought in within the topic of that linkage of land use and transportation. Thanks, Peter. All right, our next question is, um, will traffic records be made available to citizens who request them with a reasonable reason to review them? So um, I think this is getting at, um, you know, crash data and, and those types of things. So um, I'm not sure who would like to take that one. Um, Dana, maybe you're a, a good person or, um, or Scott. Um, yeah, I can take that one, uh, Greg, thank you. There's um, currently a process for requesting uh, data uh, from, uh, um, from the state that uh, a citizen can make that request and um, the state will evaluate whether that information um, can be provided within a reasonable um, time frame and cost to the state. I, I don't know if um, Scott or Peter would like to um, to clarify any of that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dana. Um, so crash data is protected. Um, I'm I'm assuming uh, you're asking for crash reports specifically. Uh, that is protected information under Delaware Code. Uh, there's also a Senate bill that's currently out there. I believe it's Senate Bill 28. Um, that is looking to potentially expand uh, the reach of uh, requesters for crash data for uh, specifically uh, the quantitative aspect of it. So, uh, you know, uh, crash numbers, crash, different crash types and the like. Um, other than that, everything uh, crash related is. Thanks, Dana and Scott. And um, I'll just share, uh, Senator, Hansen um, just added that that uh, 
that bill 28 that you were referring to, Scott, passed the Senate on Tuesday, and I guess it's over in the House at this point. So um, it's moving through its legislative process. Thank you, Senator. All right, the next question we have is, um, what were the key learnings coming out of the previous SHSP? So I think any, uh, several of us on the call could, uh, could answer this question. So I'll, I'll let anybody take this one. So I think we'd all have different opinions on some key learning aspects um, in the various ease that we've, we've mentioned throughout the plan. Um, there's been a lot of consistency between the previous plan and this plan with regards to the EAs and some of the focus areas, except we've tried to look at enhancing various things and also looking at things for the next, over the next five years that we could foresee coming for, to fruition, such as the CAV topic and connecting autonomous vehicles and trying to include them into the plan. So to me, the, it, there's a lot of value within the existing plan that essentially supports previous plans. Um, and there's uh, different elements, again, with the, the growth of where we're trying to go and the, and the aggressive nature of trying to improve the fatals and serious injuries over the next several years. Um, to, to really try to address all the various E's um, that, that hit a, a concern or a request to improve safety. So Peter, to add on to that, I think there's, there's definitely things from previous plans that are working. Uh, and those include um, you know, the use of high friction surface treatments, uh, rubble strips, and other roadway departure uh, countermeasures that we've uh, implemented over the years uh, that has helped uh, to uh, lower the number of fatality and serious injuries related to roadway departure crashes. Uh, but I think also there, we've learned that there's more work to do in areas such as pedestrians and intersections. Uh, and, that, and that's what this plan helps us uh, move towards is, is doing more work in those areas and trying to reduce those types of crashes as well. And then at, at this point, we currently do not have any um, open questions. Um, I'm not sure if anybody would like to elaborate on anything they've, they've said at this point, uh, but uh, right now there's currently no questions. I stand corrected, we just got one, so. Um, this question is, what are the considerations when you add pedestrian crosswalks? Do you consider whether the location is safe enough, is a safe enough place for the pedestrian to cross? If it is not safe, what do you do to deter the pedestrians from crossing at those locations? So uh, the, the consideration for pedestrian crosswalks um, so from a uncontrolled perspective, um, we're always evaluating whether through um, existing local research that we've conducted, as well as national research, um, as to kind of the effectiveness of the treatment or what type of treatment could be placed along a corridor or at that specific location. Existing conditions are always key in regards to what do we see out in the field, what do we see usage-wise, um, connectivity-wise, cr crash data-wise, um, different elements in regards to, again, those, those existing conditions. Um, and, it, and those things all weigh into kind of that, that behavior. Um, can linkage to uh, DTC facilities, um, establishments that may promote the connective connectability for walking or that vulnerable user, um, which also includes bicyclists. Um, so they all kind of go into that evaluation process. Um, from that safety perspective in deterring it, that's going to be a challenge as part of the, 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 this plan. What type of tools, what kind of mechanisms can we do? Are there low cost countermeasures or are we talking, you know, high dollar type of um, efforts um, that 
look to deter pedestrians from crossing. But again, partnering uncontrolled, especially mid-block crossings with signalized crossings is also key so that we're not deterring one at behavior from occurring mid-block, but then also providing that viability somewhere else for a pedestrian to has, have ease of crossing the roadway. And thanks, Peter. Uh, I'm, this is Mark. I'm going to add on a little bit to that. So some of the, the, the main things we're looking at uh, related to whether you put in a crosswalk or not at an uncontrolled location would be the traffic volume, the vehicle speed, the width of the crossing, and the pedestrian demand. And then those things we would factor in and decide, should we put a crosswalk in at all? Should we put in a crosswalk with the added features like we talked earlier about the rectangular rapid flash beacon, which has been very successful in uh, in increasing driver yielding at crosswalks. Uh, and another great tool that we have that's a little more expensive is that we can put in a, a median refuge island uh, that that helps break up the crossing for the pedestrian where you can really focus on one side of traffic, get to the median island and then focus on the other side of traffic. And it also produces a bit of a traffic calming effect. So thinking about where to put a crosswalk that's not controlled by a light is a, is a very, uh, it, it's, it's an evolving area. And we are, uh, as Peter said, staying up and up to speed with the latest national uh, research on all that all the time. At traffic signals, we, we, can, we can always put in crosswalks and there the, the consideration is a, is a trade-off between sometimes when we add crosswalks, the time you need to give it a traffic signal for the pedestrian to cross is taking time away from other movements at the signal, which may be increasing delay or increasing crashes for uh, some of the vehicular movements. So, uh, so we, we, we are adding crosswalks at traffic signals at a far higher rate than we used to. And, uh, and it's usually it's just a matter of whether you get a crosswalk on every approach at, a, at an intersection uh, or on, um, on just three, say three out of four of the approaches. So that's, a, that's an excellent question. Oh, and then the last piece that I wanted to add on is in deterring pedestrian movements where we think they should not be crossing. Um, we do have a project on Route 13 south of Wilmington that's gonna be adding a uh, pedestrian barrier uh, up and down that median to better funnel the pedestrians to the uh, designated crosswalk location. So uh, we're, we're, that project is in design and we have some other areas throughout the state um, that we are, um, we are looking at that as well. Thanks, Peter and Mark. Currently, there are no questions. Okay, so I think uh, since we don't have any further questions, um, if, if anybody does think of a question, feel free to email that to dotpublic at delaware.gov and we'll get a response to you as soon as possible. Uh, thank you everybody for your attendance and your questions this evening. Uh, we hope you uh, gain some information about safety in Delaware and, and what we're doing to try to reduce uh, fatality and serious injury crashes on our roadway. Uh, I wanna remind everybody to drive safe and be well. And again, thank you for your participation this evening. And so we will go ahead and end the uh, meeting. Thank you.